Hello world! I'm your host Bunny. This is Awesome Nuts and we're playing Gno. Yes, I still pronounce it Gno because that's his name, according to himself, and who am I to question him? We are doing a Ribbit 4 map, and this is a special bit on Ribbit 4 that we're using Pigbank and Solar Tree and no run speed. A very strange thing to do, but on this map it's very viable because we have so close distances between the turrets that we don't need the run speed too much as long as we defend it properly. Instead, this build is based around gaining control as soon as possible on a certain area of the map and then keeping that control. And for those asking, where did the Leon build go that I promised? I'm still working on a Leon build, but it turns out that the Lone Star Mr. TNT build that I made has become a little bit too popular for my own good, because I don't have a counter to it as Leon. We're taking Piggy Bank, Solar Tree, Weedlings and reduction of parts for Weedlings and we're gonna start getting control off the map as soon as possible. The first thing we do on this map is just try to cover both lanes because the Weedlings are strong enough before anyone upgrades anything. So we're gonna be jungling a little bit and apparently stealing our own parts but that's okay. And also remember that the Hyper Bull can be used to get parts so that's what we do here. And there's our two wheelings, let's go to the bottom lane, and here's Clunk and Leon, Leon running away, which means that we can start building our little defense here. Clunk is probably the most annoying character to play against as a wheedling Gnaw for some reason. Clunk has a very very high... He's a tank, and he can self-heal and he can explode, which means that he can get rid of your wheedlings quite easily. However, it's still a bot, so I'm not gonna bother with any special tactics against him. In general, you would want to spread the weedlings out a little bit more and focus on him more. So, we now have three weedlings at the bottom and one weedling on top because we have the bots on top as well, so we're not gonna be bothering about that lane too much for now. There's our four weedlings, which ensures that this lane is now clear for most things. As you can see, it they do about 24 per shot, or per salvo in total, all four of them. It's 6 times 4, so that should be 24 according to my numbers. And we're gonna leave them there for now. As long as there's one person in that lane and all the four weedlings, there's nothing really that can stop them at this point in the game. Again, as I said, if there's not a very, very good clunk going at it, then it's gonna be a problem. So, we're gonna go back and see how much our flex neck is. It's 295, so we need 295 before we can get a double shot for our weedlings, which is the next upgrade we're gonna get, simply because it's the best investment of damage in terms of how much it costs. So, we're gonna go get that, and then these little weedlings will in total double their damage from one upgrade, which is a very good thing to do, especially when you're close to it. Go. We have the money, but I'm not too keen on just leaving the lane up. Then again, I'm low on health, and that droid is gone, so that should reset them in that lane. Which means we can leave it for now, there's no real hurry. Clunk can't take care of the droids himself easily, so he needs to wait for it. Which gives us time to get the weedlings, the upgrade, and back we go with a double shot. Now, you have to remember that Every time you get an upgrade for the Weedlings, you need to put out new Weedlings because the old Weedlings do not gain that upgrade for whatever reason. However, it's not too hard to take care of. We're just gonna go into the jungle. And our two droids here, we're gonna jump up, bite, jump down, place Weedling, and repeat. Until we have all four of them, and now we can go get rid of it. Which means we've pretty much secured this area for now. These little 24 times 2 48 damage wheelings will take care of anything that steps on the glass wall, and it also gives me health at the same time. So we have that done, and we're gonna be pushing this turret as long as we can. We put out one wheeling, that's okay. It does so much damage right now that it's worth sacrificing it. Lone Star coming around. I think Lone Star already knows that I have my wheelings out, and he's not gonna be able to do anything really funky you can see it right there and now he's pretty much blocked off from going onto the ramp because 
he knows he can't do anything and as long as he can't see what's going on down there he can't exactly place a dynamite on it as uh, either. Also I think he doesn't have the hyper ball which is for my benefit. I'm gonna put one weedling out and go at it and run away. As you can see it does just about enough damage to be really annoying. So we're gonna gain parch again and now we're just gonna wait. We don't need to put out the third one because I know Lone Star isn't gonna try anything stupid or anything good in his case. He could probably wipe that out, but I'm not gonna tell him. So, he can see what's going on. He gets hit from it and that scares him away. Which means the lane is now free for me to roam on. And the Weedling is helping out a whole lot. So we're gonna be putting Weedlings up again. Also, the Weedlings as a secondary thing is that when the droids die, I don't need to run as far back to get cover from the Weedlings. Meaning that the Weedling takes all the damage from the turret while I manage to get away without taking damage. Which is very, very convenient. And something I recommend everyone to do, regardless. If Even if you're playing a bite build, you should probably have the Weedlings just to put one out as soon as you are at the turret. Because that gives you, a, I'd say it gives you a good three or four extra bites in security if you can pull it off and that can make a whole lot of difference for most people. And here comes the super droid hitting me in the face because I'm not very good at that. I'm placing one on the ramp just to see what happens. It shoots, dies with the health regen you could probably do something with that. Regardless we need to take this thing out. Leon coming being a little bit of a hassle so we're gonna run away. Keep in mind that I'm not using run speed now, so I need to run as soon as I see Leon, because Leon can always catch up to me. And probably kill me at this point as well. There we go, Weedling damage. Fully upgraded Weedlings at this point. Nothing has been killed. We are six minutes in. And that's a really good way to gain control. We apparently have a Yuri around there as well now. That's not gonna bother us too much. A good Yuri can also take out Weedlings very effectively, but... I can already tell from this guy that he's not going to be that guy that takes out the Weedling, so I'm not going to be too strategic about it either. But in case of Yuri, you want to get spit as soon as possible, and while placing out Weedlings, go and just harass Yuri and keep him away from things. There we go, a little extra health. We're going to be placing our Weedlings at the bottom lane, since we have taken out the turret above, and they have taken one below, which means that we should be in this lane. don't have enough parts at this point and I'm not going to leave to get parts but I'm going to run away, place these things out and Lone Star almost getting killed if he had tried to stay and fight. Clever Lone Star not running into anything stupid. So we should have kept the seed with the weed link for placing out in the middle but then again when you are at the bottom you can always get dropped from three different places above and you really want to be safe on that so you can get away. Yuri knows what he's doing right now and I can't do much against him but that is okay. I can We can afford losing a turret at this point and here apparently people come after having played so far this first seven minutes without anything but bots and still pushing quite well. We, we want to turn down but that's okay. Yuri trying to be funny and as you know, luck is part of my build, so I managed to survive this time as well. Not recommended for beginners. We're gonna take lifesteal and a health upgrade. Since we can't place anything in the weedlings, we're just gonna go for survival right now, because as you should know by now, if you die, the weedlings also die, and that is the biggest problem with Gnaw with this build, that if I now die, all the weedlings go out and they are very, very, very important at this point. Another Gnaw has joined as well and he takes out my Weedlings. That is okay because the Weedlings were focused on the Super Droid and that's what we want to get rid of right now. Super Droids hurt. Here comes Gnaw, low on health, bitten and dead. Always pick up if someone tries to escape. I'm gonna chase Lone Star away. And try to dodge, take his health. And he's pretty much screwed right now because I don't think he can do much against this. No, he couldn't. And we have a mine Yuri getting in the way of Leon and my seedlings, my weedlings. Why do I not 
understand how to pronounce that yet. Anyways, that's how you get rid of people and get 5 kills in under a minute or so. I'm not one to complain. And apparently that makes this game rigged according to Lone Star with a name that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. I'm okay with that. It's a good solid build and it annoys people. That means that you're doing something right, right? The more rage you can get and the more rage quitting, the better your build is, I'd say. Or the worse the players are that you're playing against. One of the two. I'm going with a good build because I'm at 5-0 now and we're pushing very, very hard. The bottom lane has apparently also been pushed by Leon, I take it. I'm not one to complain when having good players join in on my team either. Sadly, as you know, the matchmaking is not the best at this point in time and I have ge I've been getting offers from some viewers about joining up in teams and playing stack teams and that and I appreciate the offers, I really do, but I feel that quick battle is the proper way to show off uh, how builds work in a real setting, you know. If I'm playing stack teams it doesn't really matter how my build looks if we're facing off against pugs or, you know, randoms. So that is why I will not be playing stack teams when I do these videos, as long as matchmaking is not fixed. And this is pretty much the whole build. It's very very effective on this map in particular I should say. There's the GG. And try it out, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun and all you need to do is gain control as soon as possible. I've been your host, you've been the audience, thank you for watching.